Okay, good afternoon. Um, and before I start, I am hoping that I don't choke or cough massively during this broadcast because I've been coughing all day long. Um, I got nuked by a heavy head cold last night I didn't plan on having, having been free for a couple of days, excuse me, a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks, but I got nuked by it. So bear with me, I'll attempt to get through this without coughing. So welcome to episode 666. Yeah, it's that devil's number. Um, this is episode 666. And the topic today is, um, has, me too, has Me Too gone too far? And let's talk about toxic masculinity. I figure I blend hashtags because they're both on my mind recently. And I had a conversation uh, Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Uh, yeah, it was Tuesday night. Um, no, Wednesday night. Because it doesn't matter. Recently, I had a conversation with this guy who was very adamant about a position about Me Too being over. And I was like, I don't agree with that. But it triggers something in me. So... Before I jump into all of that stuff, let me introduce myself and hopefully, just hoping my throat holds out, we'll, we'll get through this. So, my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't figure that out already. Um, I am a, a, I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. And I do this because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which also inspired these talks I've done every day now for over two years, called Messages from the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And... This is now episode number 666, and it's a Facebook Live I do every day, so if you're watching on YouTube, it was Facebook Live first, you can watch me there, and I'll give you the links at the back end. So the topic today, being episode 666, you, you hi, hi Alicia, first of all, hi, good to see my broadcast, did I see your video, use my analogy from last week? I didn't yet, I'd like to go check it out. I know we're on the same way, we have been for a long time, we should hang out more often, although of course, Alaska's a bit of a drive from here. Um, but we will talk further, yes, I'll have a look after I finish my broadcast, if it's okay to wait that long. <laughs> So the topic today is, um, has Me Too gone too far? And let's talk about toxic masculinity. Now, if you've seen my broadcast before, you may know where I'm already going, but I'm going to start, I'm going to state it clearly in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. First of all, um, a little history, and I may be missing some bits. Yeah, I know too, so I'm glad for, glad for that. Me Too is something that needed to happen, so I'm saying that right up front. Now, and of course, I do know that Me Too didn't start with Alyssa Milano. It started actually uh, five, six years ago um, to, to do something in the African-American community. But I wanted to speak to this current version, current iteration, current expression of Me Too because the challenge has been is that right now, a lot of women, and I'm going to generalize this, are painting a lot of men with a Me Too paintbrush. There's no... Um, <laughs> verification going on I'll put it that way for to start off with the thing about me too is it's absolutely needed as I mentioned however a lot of people are stuck in the <laughs> in the aspect they're stuck in the aspect of me too where there's no progress because what me too has started is a lot of blaming and not much resolution except by punishment and so what the me too conversation has created and the me too movement and the hashtag and all the conversations is women calling men out generally it has worked the other way around as well i want to be sure i include everybody here but women calling men out and basically making them the devil and something a friend of mine said um earlier today was for example comparing al franklin with um what's his name <laughs> apparently i've expelled him from my mind interesting but the thing about the me too labeling hi alicia nice to see you my broadcast thank you um to my title or to what I'm saying? Hopefully you are. Either one is good. Good to see you, Lisa. So the thing about me too is there are disparities and, and unevenness because not every man who has been accused of the me too labeling has done the same level degree of, um, yeah, Al Franken was one and then I was thinking of, what's his name? Um, the producer who's my, it's like he's right there in my face. I, I know his face, I can see it. Um, I know McCoy, you'll jump in and remind me because I, you know, his name too. Um, anyway, the, the thing is, the difference between the two people, you know, Al Franken basically mimed, pretended, mugged for the camera that he was grabbing a woman's breast, which he wasn't doing. And this actually was back in the day when he was in, still on Saturday Night Live, I think, versus Harvey Weinstein. Thank you, McConnell. I knew it was in there. It just didn't. Thank you. So Harvey Weinstein, who basically used his power to leverage and upset women and, and control women and sexually basically molest them. It's a very dis dis serious disparity here. So, and I know that basically the thing with uh, Franklin was a political thing, a whole different thing from a sexist and a financial thing, which is all going on too. Hi, Leanne. Sorry to say, 
these generalizations could be highly triggering to sexual assault victims. Well, let me explain before you, you label me with something that's not accurate either. So bear with me for a second. So first of all, the Me Too is a spectrum. That's why I want to make one thing very clear. I should, I should say not so much the Me Too is a spectrum, but the accusations are on a spectrum. There's a range from stupidity to arrogant misogyny. And probably further than that as well, because there's a lot of other bullshit behavior. Excuse me, not bullshit, wrong word. Toxic behavior as well. And I'll get to the other part about toxicity in a minute. My feeling about this so I'm just checking my throat, still holding on. I, I, as a, in case you hadn't seen me from the beginning of the broadcast, I mentioned right at the beginning that I'm, I caught it. I got hit by a massive head cold last night, and it's and it's been unrelenting all day. I've had to cancel my whole my day plans. Wanted to go live now just to get out of the way before my voice gave out, but we'll see if I can survive it. So that's one thing going on in my radar. In case you're wondering why I'm stopping every so often, the problem. No, it's not a problem. The journey has been this. The misogyny and sexual harassment and abuse of women by men has been going on for generations. It's not brand new. The Me Too conversation is, the, is really what brought it to light in a way that was powerful, that was visible, and is getting attention, which is a good thing. However, the challenge has been how do we intelligently, articulately, and effectively punish those that, or bring to justice those that need to, and forgive the ones that people who were being doing something that was minor by comparison because the thing is some men say stupid things and women take offense and call it a me too accusation when the guy just says something stupid maybe educating him might change that and in the case of harvey weinstein i wouldn't agree with that i would say he needs more um direct feedback so from my point of view me too has gone too far in the sense that it is whitewashing so many people with the same brush and that for me is an inaccurate and an incomplete way of doing things the challenge for a lot of things that's going on is that we have, um, hmm, we're on the cusp of a massive transformation of this culture. I've been talking about this for a while. I did, I've done three broadcasts over the last five days, six days, talking about this. So you can go back and watch those if you want to find out more about that. And the Me Too is part of that elevation. The challenge is, though, sometimes the elevation is not done through grace and ease, it's through challenge and upset. So. Oh, so you're, McCall, you're responding to the other one. So assault, if assault victims are triggered, I suspect they will have the majority click out of the video chat. There is no other effective way to discuss the circumstance without some level of using generalizations. Thank you. And that's, that's true. I mean, I'm not saying that it's something that I can answer all the questions for because there are millions of people affected by this. And there are men affected too. I talked about it in one of my previous broadcasts that I went through a Me Too experience years ago as a man with a woman. So just to be clear, it's a wide range. And also the impact and the emotional, t emotional, emotional and mental distress that it causes people is also on a spectrum. So to presume that if someone is hurt by me too, that they are absolutely the worst case scenario, or that it's nothing major, is inaccurate because there's a range in there. And again, this is a spectrum. The assaults, the insults, the abuse, the hurts, the things that are under the heading of me too, are not all the same thing. This is the one I'm sure we get that clear about because there's a reaction happening. And this is the point I want to make. When people post the hashtag Me Too, some people, not everybody, but some people react with a visceral upset way out of proportion to what happened because they didn't check what the Me Too was about. And there are some people who are using Me Too as an excuse to um, either challenge or accuse people to voice their resentments or to basically call attention to themselves. And I want to say very clearly that Me Too is an important milestone in our culture. So I'll be clear about that. Thank you, McCormick. You say, without generalization, what, what are you going to, what you seem to tell me is to, oh, tell Barry to just shut up or that he speaks about this as a therapist. Well, I have a background in spiritual psychology, but I'm not a therapist, just to be clear. I'm, I'm more of a, a guide and coach than anything else. But I have seen enough of this with my clients, with my friends, and with my own community that I wanted to speak up about this because I'm seeing it play out still. And this is one of the things, by the way. We aren't done with Me Too by any stretch of the imagination. What I'm talking about with going too far is that Me Too has been, um, well, been hijacked by, by the mass media. In some ways, it's been effective. It's also been used um, indiscriminately. That's the word I want to use. 
The truth is there's a lot yet that has yet to come to light. The, the instances we have now with Harvey Weinstein and with uh, Al Franken and the other people in the, all the range in between is only in some ways the first wave of what needs to come to light. What's happening in the Catholic Church right over the last bunch of years, which is coming to a head now, is part of that same waking up to the fact that people abuse others using, power, using sex as power. And that's really what Me Too is about. It's the mis misogyny is one word for it, but it's, as it has happened from both sides of different places, it's the use of power to get sexual favor, sexual pleasure, sexual control. And that isn't over yet, unfortunately. But I want to put this on the table that Me Too, in some ways, has hurt itself more than it's helped because it's become a big roller paintbrush to paint everybody the same color and that's not going to work. So my belief is we need to look at Me Too as a flag but not as the only choice. That we can look at things with more detail, more depth, more compassion and more support for both the victim and the situation. Now before I go any further on that, I want to switch gears to the other one about talking about toxic masculine lensing. This one's one, this is a bug, this, is, this has been bugging me for a long time because I have an issue with this because of this. <laughs> I've talked about this for a long time and I believe this for myself that masculinity and femininity, I'm going to use the femininity term as well, are energetic polarities, are expressions of beingness and as such they're tied to our soul, to our spirit, to our way of being, excuse me, that is absolutely clear and healthy. The toxicity that is talked about has been slapped onto masculinity like masculinity is a way of being that's wrong and I don't agree with that. The way I've talked about it for myself is that what it really is in this context of using men as the as the um, as the perpetrators, it's toxic machoism. And I'm going to keep saying this because I'm really frustrated with the fact that he's using toxic masculinity. Because for me, masculinity is beyond that conversation. Same as femininity is too. So I believe the term really is toxic machoism because the toxicity comes from ego. The toxicity comes from a place of selfishness, control, abuse, con um, power. Um, all these different things which is really based on an egotistical machoism in the men it's also egotistic in some women that do it as well and again there are some women who've used that um, weaponized toolkit to hurt other people oh yeah <laughs> thank you McCall uh oh women who have no understanding of, what, of masculinity and have specific access to grinder defining what they see as toxic yeah that's the point See, the, the challenge has been is that some hashtags appear without pre forethought about what they really mean, and then they slap them together, maybe two words together, and put them as a hashtag, and it trends. And then people use it as vernacular. We used to use a thing called a dictionary to find the words that made sense. Nowadays, it's a hashtag on Twitter. We've really come a long way, haven't we? And that's the thing for me about this toxic masculinity as a hashtag. Now, yes, I put it in the title too, because it's out there and it's trending. And yes, I'm using it selfishly to be noticed. <laughs> but I don't agree with it. And this is my point again is that the toxic behavior is really tied to egotistical selfishness that is independent of gender and certainly independent of polarity. So it's not masculine based. In men, it is, it is macho based. And I think it's also macho in some women that act like men. Because I've talked about this before about the business world being created by men for men and women have been trying to fit in that ever since. So women have had to adopt some of the patterns that men did to be able to compete and succeed in the business world. I talked about that before, so I'm not going to cover the whole thing here, but that's one of the things why some women are also guilty in this area as well, where they've been perpetrating their sexuality on men, or other women even, because they wanted to be in control. Again, copying the men. So, hey Alicia, what did you say there? Sorry, you, you've, you've voiced that the macho woman is one of those, one that throws her sexuality at men, like, like dick pics, but tits and us. It is the same way. But the thing about it, I would suggest, I would suggest, is that men tend not to take as much offense because being being um, titillated by that in the pornography arena, men think it's fine. Whereas when women get dick pics sent to them, because most women aren't getting off on pornography, it's more offensive to them. Again, difference of the different value systems. And again, I'm using general terms here because there are exceptions to the law on both sides. But yes, I see what you might I see your point. And this is this is really what it comes back to is that first of all, the Me Too movement has much more room to grow and I know that it's, well, for me, my experience has been Me Too has really actually gone quiet over the last eight months. It hasn't been as visible as it was about over a year ago, but it hasn't finished yet because there's still a lot more um, divulgence and, and revealing to happen 
with people who've done things over the years that have been hidden up to this point, including political, political and entertainment industry people. So um, what, I'm, so what I'm not saying is that Me Too is done, but what I am saying is Me Too needs to be more refined. Because for me, the biggest challenge we have is that we tend to, well, this is, this is how we live as a culture. <laughs> we tend to grab onto something and run with it without even understanding what it is we're grabbing hold of. This year, yeah, you agree, it's a, it's a, it's a double standard. It is double standard. Um, and so, sorry, you wanted to my point. And that's the thing we do as a culture is that we hear a headline or a statement or a hashtag and we grab hold of it thinking it's the right thing and then run with it down the, like down the field. Let's plant that, our flag at the end of the, end of the field and realizing we, we grabbed the wrong flag. So the assumption that we make about Me Too should be wound back in again. If you're a person who's been affected by Me Too, you have my, my, my compassion, my care and my support in healing because we all need to heal when we're stuck like that. At the same time, whatever happened to you may or may not qualify as, a, as an extreme, and I'm going to be careful to say this, because some people are going to take offense, as McCall has been pointing out. Yes, yeah, some people take offense at this. <sighs> Me Too is a powerful change in our culture. It's shifting things around, which is important, vital, and necessary right now. At the same time, your individual experience, if it's been negative, been challenging, been hurt, been wounded, been traumatized, I would not sit on the fence and use Me Too as an excuse not to get help. That's more accurate. If you are facing your own demons, your own challenges, your own uh, wounds that have been surfaced because of what's been talked about with Me Too for the last couple of years in the media, then it's a good time to get help. Whether it's through a therapist, as McCall mentioned, or through a counselor coach like myself or somebody else, it's worth investing in yourself to be whole because dragging that wound around for the next five years is not helping anybody, especially not helping you. So to be a victim of what happened to you and wear it as a badge is a really, really ineffective to choice. And it's, not, it's, it's a wounding choice too. So with, with that, I want to make sure you get this point once and for all as a reminder, is that regardless of the Me Too conversation, and again, as I switch from toxic masculinity to toxic machoism, regardless of all of that, your personal experience is your own. And to wear your own wound as a badge is not what I recommend. I highly recommend, in fact, that you do something about it, as in get support, get help, get counsel to heal those wounds once and for all because you deserve to be whole, thriving, happy, and whole. Now, um, what did you say the McCall? Sorry, you said, uh, the working world was built by men for the survival of both men and women. Those who hijack this history and reality are committing evil through writing history and attributing to men a motivation that's not true. Historically, societies have existed in more egalitarian, egalitarian terms than currently. The, the, the divergence of egalitarianism to inequality comes the most successful a society becomes when, ironically, when men have the chance to choose their career paths, those who peddle other narratives are lying through writing history. I think I understand what you're getting with that. Um, for me, so whoops, ah, Back to the begin the end of the comments. I talked about how basically because I believe the business world was really started by men initially because there were more men doing it than women were. Because when the business world was started back in the wherever it was, the twenties, thirties, forties, men were working, women weren't. Generally speaking, again, generalities being the key. Women joined in later on, but they had to really copy to fit in what was already being done, which is what men were doing. I mean, when the sexual revolution happened in the sixties. In England, the women's liberation movement, I remember vividly as a kid, because I was alive in the 60s, um, seeing pictures of Twiggy on television in magazines. And she was, a, she was the poster child, literally, for the new woman after the sexual revolution. And she wasn't necessarily sexy, because she was wearing, she had massively padded shouldered um, suits on, uh, very little makeup, short buzzed hair. She was basically copying the men in her look and appearance because a lot of women did that, as, especially around the 70s and into the 80s in the business world. Because women were literally mimicking and acting like the men to beat them at their own game. And that's something that led to the Me Too stuff as well. That's a, that's a whole other conversation. So I, I, I think you and I may differ slightly on that one, McCall. I'm not saying yours is right or wrong. I'm just saying what I believe is the case in my experience of what I remember learning as a kid. So, um, bring you back to, back to the completion. 
Me Too has a way to go. It needs to be more refined. Using it as a paintbrush is not effective. And if you're suffering your own wounds and hurt and trauma, as mentioned earlier, get some help, take care of yourself. Don't wear it as a badge. It doesn't serve you or anybody else. Yes, if you need to get justice, that's a whole other thing. But still healing yourself is a smart move independent of that. So don't wait till you've got your court case settled to get healing because it'll hurt like hell the longer you take. On the other side, again, about toxic masculinity. I am personally, and this is my view, not the worldview, it's my view, masculinity like femininity is a quality and toxicity comes from the ego and that for me is machoism not masculinity so i have a particular split in that one i want to start a hashtag toxic machoism if that will pick up speed that'd be great um i don't think it may not overtake toxic masculinity but we'll see but i don't believe toxic masculinity is a real term that's again my viewpoint and i'm sticking to it this is my broadcast so i'm doing that um so so in McCall was that no double whoops, no double standards. Men and women are different. Yes, there are in fact standards that men were held to, and a separate standards that women are held to. It's only when we force the narrative that men and women are the same and capable of the same things, such as such argue that there is a double standard. I understand that, I, and and I'm also looking at the um, the post sexual revolution, post sexual revolution, the way that things were happening. And it's interesting because we went through just splitting around the other side for a second there was a whole free love thing that was happening before that when men and women were getting together without the rigidity of business and structure it was actually a very um, sexually free time which was probably around the, well it was actually around the same time as sexual revolution but it's like after that it's like okay now we're going to get to work and I remember very vividly when I was going when I was first started working the women were basically not any different energetically we were basically all the same especially you know, I was in computer programming back in mainframes back in the day and we were all you know all keyboards no different except women may have had longer nails and kind of sort of so this that part is something that I think there's more to unpack from um, I want to keep this scope to this focus me too and toxic masculinity so with that being said um, I appreciate you being involved in, in dialoguing and arguing and, and making points too thank you for that um, this is my daily Facebook Live that goes out at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page and then goes on my business page and also goes into YouTube I'll give you the links you can find me um, and if there's any links I need to put in if you want to oh yeah if you want to chat further and if you're someone who's being dealing with some of these challenges you want some help I'll put a link in the comments for a for a contact form you can fill out to reach out to me uh, my discovery session is being rewritten I'm rewriting the form so rather than use that just go straight to my website and I'll give you the link to that on my, in, in the comments um, you th oh, you, Michael, we, oh, you think we are in agreement. The 60s were the, was the movement when the U.S. was solidly successful after World War II. That success was exactly what I was referring to. And to me, it was the embodiment of that success and the similar film of choice. Ah, okay, then we're on the same page. Good. Well, see, I saw it from the English lens because back in the 60s, I was in England. Um, and we didn't have, we had a different, well, you know, England's different from America, so we had a different way of being. Although recently with Brexit and with Trump, we have a lot of commonalities, it seems. All right, that one I'm leaving alone, not getting political. <laughs> oh, damn. I almost made it. Almost made it with that coughing. Damn. So finishing up, the replays. Um, thanks, McCall. I appreciate it. I'm glad we always have a chance to converse and, and raise the conversation. For those of you who haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page on Facebook. Yeah, we, had Austin, we didn't have Austin Powers in the 60s. That was a throwback. We had the Saint in the 60s. No, we didn't have the Saint. He was in the 70s. Anyway, stop it. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up and get off before my throat completely closes up. So my Facebook lives are on my personal page, which at 5 p.m. Pacific time at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays you can always find on my business page amongst other places, which is barryselby.author. Um, yeah, I know. I know too. Um, the replays also go to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, where all of these live from newest to oldest and you find all of them there very easily to find but the comments won't be visible so if you want to watch the comments you have to watch them on Facebook um, if you have any questions comments you can put them below and I'll respond when I sign off and again I'll put a link in the comments for, for reaching out to me if you want to contact me a um, couple of side notes I am focusing on a couple of new things I'm launching a new group program very shortly for the ladies um, it's going to be a very easy entry process so they'll be working out soon I'm also looking I'm actually going to be working on speaking events I've got a, I've got a collaborative call with a friend next week to do an event um, in April, later in April. But I'm also looking to do more speaking as well. So if you've got any of those things lined up, speaking to women about love and relationships and about 
feminine leadership, feel free to contact me as well. And uh, with that, I think I've summarized the whole thing. I'm signing off because I can feel my throat drying out. So I appreciate you being with me. Uh, if you want to send a little light for my cold to heal, I appreciate that too. And I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves. And I hope this has been of support, insight, and assistance to you. And maybe inspired you as well. See you again tomorrow. Bye.